Hi everyone, and welcome to this episode of Writers Infusion. I'm your host, Susan. I'm here with the gang, Dave, Jen, Julie, and Ed. We are here to read an excerpt of a novel that I believe was tagged as a romance. It's called Oblivious by Gwyn Plummer. Uh, I'll read the summary, and then Jen is going to read the story for us today. So, Oblivious, and oh, and I want to apologize to the author. We normally do read swears, but my daughter, who's seven, is in the studio with us today, so we're just going to fake it. Uh, I'll, try. <laughs> I'll try not to slip. We'll try not to slip. <laughs> Oblivious is the first book in the Peace Giver series, a series about a group of members of different branches of law enforcement who use their combined skills to secretly investigate closed cases they believe resulted in the wrongful conviction of innocent people. All yours. Okay. Alex, usually this sort of thing went a lot smoother. We'd go in, get the witness, and get out. But this was no ordinary situation. David had a way of getting, had a way of getting himself into the worst possible predicaments. So as far as I knew, the woman in the bed could have been working with the people trying to kill him which was why I'd instructed him to give her the sleeping pill I'd slid under the door. I found it difficult to believe that the guys we were protecting David from had just coincidentally wound up in Harborview and checked into the same hotel. Sure, the city drew in a lot of tourists with its white sand beaches and frou-frou restaurants, but as a vacation destination for mobsters, I thought not. The situation was so suspect I could, I could taste the deceit. But then again, with David's rotten ass luck, coincidence finally had been a possibility definitely had been a possibility. But even if the woman was totally oblivious to the mess her F buddy had gotten himself into, the last thing I needed was to come face to face with some broad with a thousand questions, none of which I could answer. I wouldn't even go there and risk revealing David's true identity, even though he seemed to have no qualms about it. Somebody had to be responsible, and since I'm the one with the badge, it had to be me, U.S. Marshal Alexander Girard. Not only did I not need to put our witness at risk, but I didn't need to piss off my superiors again. Yeah, that hadn't gone too well last time. Not that I'd screwed up on purpose. Unfortunately, however, when all hell broke loose, my intent hadn't meant crap. I heard a thump, my eyes shot straight to David, and I could see him rubbing his right leg with one hand while he balanced himself against the desk chair with the other. He's a couple of inches shorter than my six feet, one inch frame, and is about 20 pounds lighter than my 200. His life's a lot more interesting than his plain black suit and usual white button-down shirt had let on. And although his hair was as dark as mine, his was a lot thinner on top. More than likely the result of stress rather than his age would be my guess. Quiet, I hissed. He scowled at me as if to say, shut the F up. I couldn't, I should have been irritated about his misplaced belief that he had a right to be mad, but I let it slide. His life was screwed up enough. We stood still. I glanced over my shoulder at the mysterious woman, woman lying beneath the covers, her blonde locks covering her mm. face. I breathed in the flowery scent given off by the arrangement perched on the oak table underneath the windowsill. I couldn't help but give a quick thought as to how she'd managed to get herself mixed up with someone like David. Hopefully for her, this had been nothing more than a one-night stand, but I doubted it. The crystal chandeliers, silk sheets, 42-inch HD TV with Blu-ray, oceanfront view, and at least 800 square feet of plush carpeting spoke volumes about the price. Sleeping Beauty was still out, so I continued to gather David's belongings. The room was dark, depending on the sliver, depending on the sliver of moonlight from the partially open blinds. David walked to the table and picked up his wallet and a key card. I grabbed his wrist right when he was about to put it in his wallet. Damn, what part of it needs to be like you were never here did he not understand? It wasn't like it was our first time. He knew the drill. He looked at me, still oblivious. I glanced at the key he still held in his now-gloved hand and shook my head. Revelation struck. He grabbed a tissue and wiped the card free of prints and inserted it into the plastic sleeve. After wiping it clean as well, he dropped it onto the desk. I wasn't sure if Sleeping Beauty would really ask them to check for prints, but we couldn't take the risk. Considering how much David craved attention, I was sure there were many people who'd remember him, but I was determined to leave them all scratching their heads, and I would thank, and I would, thanks to one Mr. Oliver Ollie Stovall, our genius computer hacker, who, as soon as we exited, would erase all videos from the hotel cameras. I slowly opened the closet. The iron, which hung on the, the rack fastened to the other side, lightly bumped against the wooden door. I paused. 
After giving a quick glance to the motionless figure on the bed, I bent and lifted a small duffel bag, a small black duffel bag. David nodded. We headed to the doorway. As we passed the nightstand, I noticed a bottle of champagne. I looked back at David, my expression conveying that I was wondering where the glasses were. David slowly turned his head to face the opposite side of the bed. Great, I mouthed. I pushed the bag into his stomach. He let out a soft grunt. Effer, just better be glad, <coughs> excuse me, I hadn't, eat, I hadn't used my fist, which had still been an option. Lowering to my knees, I stretched out and army crawled around the foot of the bed. I focused on the area of her hidden face and the small arm hanging from the side of the bed as I made my way to the nightstand. As I reached up to grab one of the glasses, I heard a small sigh and the rustling sound of the sheets. The arm disappeared. My heart raced. Without moving my head, I looked at her. She went still. Carefully taking the half-full glass by the base, I slowly slid it from the table. Instead of turning around, I backed up and immediately came to a halt, my foot entangled in the bedspread. Darn it. <coughs> I lifted my leg and slightly shook my foot, trying my best not to jostle Sleeping Beauty. She stirred. The spread moved. I stilled. Was she waking up already? What kind of sleeping pill was that? I held my breath while I awaited the answers to my question. She exhaled softly and settled back down. When she settled, I reached back to free my foot, and I felt the warm liquid spill over my hand. Continuing my retreat, I wiped my hand on the bedspread and turned, increasing my speed which I reached when I reached the foot of the bed. I waved my hand to get David's attention and then pointed at the doorway. David gave a quick nod and headed into the living area. I stood and followed close behind. The low wattage lamp on the table next to the sofa provided enough light to continue our mission. Searching for forgotten items, my eyes wandered over the tan and burgundy striped Queen Anne sofa and antique chair. Nothing but a glass vase filled with an assortment of flowers remained on the rectangular oak dining table. David put the wallet and socks in his jacket pocket, pulled the bag strap over his shoulder, and gripped the door handle. When he opened the door, <coughs> it poured the dim light from the hallway. In poured the dim light from the hallway. Believing we'd gotten everything, we quietly slid out the door. I surveyed the hallway. It was quiet. There was a cleaning cart parked in front of the room four doors down, evidence that someone would soon return. I grabbed David's arm and headed for the stairs. Stay in front of me, I barked in a stage whisper as he fell behind. After a quick peek, we entered the stairwell. Concentrating on nothing but our escape, we raced down the four flights of stairs, joined, joined by cool air, the faint smell of disinfectant, and the sound of our own footsteps. <coughs> <coughs> it's about time, said Will, who was waiting for us at the first floor exit. He hadn't packed up anything, I said. Well, that was smart, and not a waste of time at all, replied Will, a muscular blonde-haired man with light brown eyes. He was dressed in khaki dickies, in a khaki dickies uniform, and stood next to a large cart loaded with cleaning supplies. He reached into the cart and pulled out a black jacket, matching the pants we both knew David would be wearing. If nothing else, the guy was predictable, which made it easy for us to catch him in the first place. Put this on. He threw the jacket to David. David yanked off the black jacket he was, he was already wearing, pulled his wallet from the inside pocket, and tucked it into his back pocket. He handed the jacket to Will, who placed it in the duffel bag with the champagne glass I'd given him into the cart. Why am I changing? It looks just like the one I had on, asked David. Looks like it, but it's not like it, explained Will. This one has a tracking device. If stuff goes downhill and you get grabbed, just sit tight, we'll be close behind. Good idea. Will and I gave each other the can you believe this guy look. Can, can you, <coughs> can, can your head down, keep your head down at all times, continued Will, and no matter what happens, don't say anything to anyone. You know the drill. David nodded. We're going out through the kitchen. Will peeked into the hallway. Let's go. We hustled our way down the narrow hallway. It was 2 a.m. Other than the one overnight front desk clerk who was paying more attention to us than the magazine he was pretending to read, the lobby was empty. Avoiding the clerk's line of sight, we made sure to stay close to the wall, dodging behind a large potted plant, obtaining a better view of the hallway that led to the kitchen. Noticing the coast was clear, we picked up the pace and headed toward the double doors ten yards away. When we got halfway down the hall, the doors opened. Out came a young man wearing a white polo shirt with the hotel logo on the left side of his chest, right above his, na right above his name tag. There you are, said the young man, looking squarely at Will. Our guest in room 506 requests immediate assistance. Since you're going up, take this with you. <coughs> Excuse me. He held out a silver platter with a dome lid. 
The expression on Will's face was enough for me to jump in, and good thing I had. Otherwise, Mason, as his name tag revealed, would have been tasting a sample of Will's skin cells delivered hot off his fist. No matter how much I explained that he couldn't break cover out of anger, Will just didn't get it. He hated being told what to do, and unless someone had a direct power over his career or life, he'd waste no time telling them where to stuff their orders. I'll take it, I said, reaching around Will to take the dish. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I kept coughing. Mm. Sorry. You want to cough to cough? Oh, it's sorry. <laughs> it's the cold. It's yeah. cold in here, so it's like, cold in yeah. Mm. But it's good eating. So, I'll start with that. You can definitely get a feel for this cop. Like you can tell he's a cop. Mm -hmm. You know, you get that voice, kind of, kind of a rough kind of talk. And so, I, I thought that part was good. Um, I definitely have several suggestions and questions. And the first one is that I just don't really get the plot. Mm -hmm. I don't really get what's going on. Like, mm -hmm. what, what is the whole point of this scene? Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? I and mean, you've got a guy, and, you know, there are two things, like, right off. I'd say you've got this, they're going into a hotel room. I got that, and there's a woman there that maybe she was slept with the other guy, and maybe she hadn't. I couldn't quite figure that out. Did they knock her out? Because she was a witness? Yes, they didn't. How did they, that happen? No. Well, he but slipped it's a, a, a sleeping pill in the door. Door. Sleeping, I don't but know how. Says, how did, okay, so it how says, does he let him know that he's slipping a sleeping pill under the oh, door? Oh, good question. He's something in that right, woman. Right. Yeah, that was but a let me just, So the very first line, it says, <laughs> we go in, get the witness, and mm -hmm. get out. So yep. my first in inclination is to think that this woman is the witness. So then you get, because I don't right. know. Right. right. So you get to the next big paragraph, and they've given her a sleeping pill. Mm -hmm. So then if she is the witness, what kind of, inf like, yeah. who's the witness? Yeah, you have to identify David, David is the witness. They're trying to get, right, the the now, right, they're trying get, to get David up, but you're right, that's not. But, but what I, does that I, mean? I, mean, I do not understand what happened before this scene, though. Well, I mean, right. were, they, were they staying in the hotel? Was David staying in the hotel? It seems like, yeah, well, since it said, you have a in witness. our hotel. Yes. But if you have a witness and you yes. say, we go and get the witness and get out, the first thing mm -hmm. I think is, there's a witness who's in trouble. Yes. Right. In a right. very yes. bad scenario, yes. and yes. you're trying to extract them from exactly. that scenario. That's yes. Right. So that's the first thing I'm looking for when I go to the next that's line. Right. Yes. And then I'm totally lost. And, but they've done this before, and yet they caught David. Right, they so catch him. They right. caught, we had to catch him. Is and he a then, bad guy or a he's good a, guy? Exactly. Is he working know. with them? Because they, we've done this before, but he knows nothing. Marshall, uh, Gerard will tell you. You're supposed right. to get out of here without leaving any trace. Yes. And then, yeah. he, then we give him a jacket. The guy says to him, you know the drill. He's he doesn't know the drill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's no reason for any right? of this. Like, what is it that okay. David know? Like, I don't get, I don't get what's going on. I don't get it because of pronouns. Look at the first three lines here. It says, I knew the woman in the bed could have been working for the people. Vague. Trying to kill him. Who? Which is right. why I instructed him. Who? To give her. Who? Right. The sleeping pill I slid right. under the door. Yes. How? <laughs> right. right. That's the first right. sentence. Right. Those right. are the yeah. first sentence. Right. I am confused from the get-go. Yeah. Right. Easy to fix. I mean, it's... Let's summarize the action in this first five pages. <laughs> There's a guy in there with a woman who's sleeping. Who's been this drugged. guy comes in. Why? Who they know. drugged. Right. They drugged, right. right. To get David out, but he's mobile. Why can't he just right. leave? Walk out. Right. right. Yeah. She's asleep. End of, end She's asleep. Right. I know. Why is right. his stuff Bye -bye. in her room? Yes. When, well, he, when I'm seduced by beautiful women in yes. hotels, <laughs> I never bring my no, suitcase It's always to a surprise. Room. It's right. always in my room. <laughs> you know? Right, that's but true. I always wear fancy underwear, me. too. And then, it seems like this so, is so go back to what Dave's saying. We, what's happening? <clears throat> so we have the woman, she's knocked out. She's out cold because of a sleeping pill. David's in there because he's been... Which he gave her. Somehow, Some, he crushed it and put it into the wait, champagne. Wait, so let's in go back. Champagne. Let's just to go back to what's happening. Okay. <laughs> so then the cop takes a long time. Oh my God. With yes. a lot of play. detail yes. to get the stuff out of the room. Yeah. But we don't really know why yet. And then they leave and they bag. meet some guy in a kitchen. And On then, the way up. No, no. Yeah. Yes. And then they has the David has to change because yeah, I thought they left the building. Will's, when they went down the four Will's flights, I thought they left the building. Did they leave the building? No, turn, the I lobby? guess not. They ended up no. in the front lobby. Will with one L 
which bothers me, uh, <laughs> is maybe it's Wilmot or something, uh, is dressed as if he's an employee. Right. And so the manager of the hotel, assuming he's an employee, tells him to go up to room 506. So he's undercover. But Marshall Gerard goes to the room, and I have to pack his bag, take his bag. But the what whole, point, the the whole bag. point is that nothing is happening. Right. We don't know why anything's happening. There's right. no tension in this scene. There's right. no conflict, which we were and talking about in other episodes. She wakes up. What's right, going to happen right. if she wakes up? Why, why do you, why he doesn't right. want to answer why some questions. Why are we worried about it? Right. And, and so I, I think maybe you're trying to create intrigue by holding information back, but I think you're holding too much back because it's actually creating confusion. So yes. give us, you know, why is David important? Why are they extracting David? He's a... Uh, in the witness protection program, or right. he, he's an informant for the mob, or whatever, but all whatever this it is. can be like a Tell whispered conversation is. or something. This right. entire thing yes. was right. way too much telling. Also, I mean, some of these things are just mm -hmm. not consistent, and that drives yes. me crazy. Like at the end when, okay, the, the, the guy comes out of the kitchen and says, there you are, as if he recognizes Will, which he cannot possibly because he's never been there before. Right. Okay? But he seems to think that Will is an employee because he's dressed like one. But then the, the cop says, I'll take it. So is he also dressed as an employee? Right. In which case, why didn't the manager mm -hmm. say it to him? Mm -hmm. I also thought Will appeared out of nowhere. I thought that we should have known that they were going to be meeting up with somebody. Right. They mentioned yes. this other guy who doesn't ap actually appear. The hacker guy, mm. mm -hmm. but they don't mention Will. Well, the hacker guy is going to wipe all the all the video right. footage. Great, He's but aren't there live? The but aren't there live witnesses? There must be live witnesses, and they say that Dave is an attention seeker. Okay, not good for this role. Then they say they're sneaking. They're sneaking everywhere. They're wiping their fingerprints, and then they go past the guy there's on the no front motive. desk who's no, watching no them. Motive. They're staying at the hotel. I mean, they're I don't staying know if they're all at staying. this. You think? Well, I they sneaked in. Well, well, she does. The author does mention at the beginning that. That they're trying to protect the David, the witness, from the from people the in the mob. Yes. Right? Yes. And I think that the what does author, that say there? it says it uh, on, we were, they believe that the guys, were we protecting David from Head Quinsley? It says it on the, the next long, line. The long first paragraph. Uh, my red. Oh, I got coincidence? Yeah. 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 So I think what the author might be trying to do is like letting us know that there are mobsters they have to get away from. Yes. And then taking a very long time, play by play, so that we're supposed to feel tense because they're, we're, saying, we're taking it step by step to get out of there. But there's yeah. nothing going on. <coughs> it's not like we just caught sight of the mobsters out the window and we need to somehow get out of the hotel. Right. Yes. And, and we don't even know, and by the way, we don't even know why. We have no idea. And David, does, does David even talk? No. So no. That's a funny. Or a whisper. It is right. a whisper. Right. I mean, there's you're no right. real interaction. Mm -hmm. It's just a also, lot of telling. Also, I mean, if you're trying to build tension, the, this is not set up the way you build tension. You build tension with short sentences, short paragraphs. These are really mm -hmm. long sentences. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of really thought going on, right? It's all in his head. And there's lots a lot of, of description. Yes. Yes. If you want tension, it's like, did this, saw that, this happened, that happened, I did this, we went there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that kind of stuff. That's tension, not not long, rambling sentences and paragraphs and lots of description. And the introspection so, and getting your foot right. caught in the I, bedspread. And I think yeah. the biggest part is yes, the, the whole introspection is way yeah, too and much that, of it. And that's what's suspenseful because I don't know what's going to happen if Sleeping Beauty wakes up. So I, like, why, now, why is she in yes. danger? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, they right. said they wanted to get David out without leaving any trace. Yes. Right, but they said well, you know, well, we don't well, want her asking her in the first place. So why? the question yeah, is... He met her in a bar and that's it. But the question and, and why, is why... How did he meet her in a bar if he's But the question is why is David so valuable? Yeah. Right. Why does he have to get out? Right. Right. Why do right. they have What's to get out? What's the risk of losing right. him? We don't know. Right, and, and I think the, the woman is somebody because they say we don't want her, you know, asking them to check for prints. Mm -hmm. So if she's just a one night stand. She's not going to say, "Hey, I just you know I woke up and the guy was gone. Check <laughs> check my fingerprints." You know what I mean? Like yeah. Right. Right. Also, right. You know, go what's home. This, what's this key card shame, that they're wiping? You know? What's the what? It's what's this key, key card? card? That's the to get, oh, the to, the get to the hotel. Yeah. No, I know what yeah. a key card oh, is. I'm but trying to help you out here. The only key card that he would have would be the key card to his room. Yes. Why is this guy so saying wipe room. it down and leave it here? Oh, as if you were never there, right? Make it look like you weren't there. But I was bothered if by... If you weren't there, take your key card with you. Well, maybe it's her right? key card. I was well, bothered maybe by... Maybe she gave him she her key she card. She was pretty, pretty aware that she went into the room with a guy, right? 
Well, I think we, we do think so. <laughs> we don't know. She's yeah. oblivious. It's we called oblivious. So. Is she oblivious? Is Dave oblivious? And a lot of little know. things to that. Not only was there just way too much detail of catching the foot in the blanket and on and on and on with so many little details, yeah. but we knew she was knocked out. But you repeat it. You know, it was repeated many times that she, she was knocked to out. We already knew she was times, right. right. And you know, if the, there are flowers in the. You know, when you leave the room. Oh my God, the flowers. When in you, the but vase. when you leave yes. the room, and the only thing that you see are the flowers and the vase left on the table. Why is that significant? Because so, this is a woman trying to tell it as a man, and it's just, I don't know, I think she's just falling back to defaulting maybe to he's a cop what a woman he, he might notices notice. everything? Yeah. Well, I mean, what I, I find interesting is there are a lot of details, and then there are quite a few missing. And I made a, a reference to uh, Stephen Colbert, whom I've been watching a lot of lately. Uh, he has imaginary props. He will talk about something, he'll take a sip from a mug, and then he makes sure to put it on an imaginary table off camera. <laughs> it's so bloody funny. He has something, he'll put it back in his pocket, this fake phone he's playing on, puts it in his pocket. So we have a champagne bottle, two wine, two champagne glasses, but only one is tucked away. We have the, car key, the key card that is wiped down of fingerprints. We have uh, Gerard going into the bath, into the closet, not the bathroom. No one checks the bathroom for towels, for evidence. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, props, and, and most importantly, perhaps, he has a wallet and socks. socks. Did they go in his pocket? I don't know where his shoes are. Does he carry them out so he can put them on outside? Is he already wearing them sockless? But when he's given his second jacket, I just noticed in this rereading, uh, he makes sure to transfer his wallet to the new jacket, but not the socks. socks yeah. Now, is that an oversight? Are the socks important? Do the socks hold a microchip or something? If there's intrigue, I don't know. But really, there's a lot I of... I um, that, too. He didn't give socks. Inattention to detail, and it, it bothered me because for a, a novel like mm -hmm. this, the concept of this, U.S. Marshal, you want to oh, yeah. cover all bases. And you the people it. who read stuff like this, like it. they oh, yeah. detail every, zero in on things every, like um, that. Yeah. I dotted every T cross. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I love books like this. Just um, yes. from a, a just a, a technical thing. So um, there's a lot of looking and noticing and glancing and seeing. You don't have to say um, I noticed the coast was clear. Just the coast was clear. Mm -hmm. um, I you know I saw David next to the bed. No, David was next to the bed. So you don't have to say I see, I saw, I heard. I um, so just that's just for a, a technical um, you know technical critique. That's good. I changed all the speakers and put them before the verb. Like there's a lot oh, of right. replied will and yeah. you know explained will. Well, the way we always David. say it is that if you say replied he, then that's an indicator that you're doing it backwards. Yeah. Right. It's an easier way to hear it and know yeah. that it's oh, wrong. That's good. It's okay it's if it's it. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. You, know, you can say said Pooh. Is but it? Not, <laughs> yeah. Good to know what that's about it. Yeah, well, I, think, I think the biggest, well, the two biggest things, I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. Yep. That's a problem. That's it a really problem. Is. I really yes. didn't, there was, I had no background for why this guy was going in the room, why David was important, why he had to get David out. There was just, there was no, there was, there was no tension behind this. I had no idea what there the story be, was. There could be, though. Yeah. Yes. I, mean, I, think, oh, yeah. I think she dropped the ball when she yeah. brought, when I finished it the second time, because I didn't get it the first time. The second time, I said, okay, now I get it. This has all the elements of a very tense, secretive, uh, uh, creeping yeah. around. In the, and it has it all, but it's not here on the page now. I think if uh, uh, the author wishes to think about getting rid of the things that we said were extra or out of order or doesn't make sense and get rid of a lot of the pronouns that who, you know, uh, I, I think you've got something to work with. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an interesting opening scene. Mm -hmm. That would that would oh, grab yeah. me if because mm -hmm. I, I'm very literal. If I read something, I see it as a movie scene, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I can see the the uh, uh, the motel room. And I can see them in there. And I can see them doing creeping around and trying to. Get, I have to know why they're there though. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, that's really important. Then there's tension. If they get caught, then somebody's going to shoot the, them and their entire family. Okay, now we got a problem. Mm -hmm. But I don't okay, know why risk? they're there. What's so at stake? Right, what's at stake? Can I give an example? What's on the table? What Can are you I give betting? an example? Let's say they opened it up like this, and you know, I'm just, this is just an example. You have the cop. What's the cop's name? Gerard. Alex. So, yeah, yeah Alex, Alex is out, outside the hotel, and he, you know, he's, got a, he's on his phone, and he's saying, I'm going in. The witness is inside. He's compromised. We've got 
and this is exaggerating, but we've got mobsters that we just spotted down the street. I'm going in before they can get them. And then he goes in and, you know, he runs into like the guys maybe naked in the bed and, and maybe she's out, who knows who is. And he goes in and he's like, you got to get out of here right now. We've got 10 seconds to wipe this place yeah. down. They're going to come after mm. you and we need to get you into witness well, protection do, before. Do, 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 well, now do, I know do, what's do, going do, on. Do, no, it right. doesn't mean yes. I know why he's going into the witness protection yeah. program or what's behind it yet. But and that's a, okay. There's an immediate tension. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes. now I understand yeah. what's going on. It's happening one thing after another. The two are interacting in the right. room mm -hmm. and it's just a scene play by play. You know, it's not... And you're holding your breath to see if they can get out right. without Before yeah. these other guys. Exactly. Right. Well, right. Speaking of dialogue, I hadn't noticed David didn't speak. You're absolutely right. And speaking of scenes... And they can page, whisper, by the way. They don't, you absolutely. know... Absolutely. On page two, um, not only did I not need to put on one witness, or risk, witness at risk, sorry, but I didn't need to piss off or set off my superiors again. Yeah, that hadn't gone too well last time. Not that I'd messed up on purpose. Unfortunately, however, when That's all heck broke loose. That's too much illuminating. But yeah. maybe that should be a scene and not just be alluded. Right. Why is he alluding to? Why you, don't alluding to you don't even need that. You don't need well, that. Well, it could here. be rich if, if that was parallel to this scene. If it were. No, if it he could be on the phone with a supervisor, and the that supervisor could, could say, yes. I hope this not is like going last better. Time. Yeah, don't screw up Not like in Dunkirk. Yes. Then that yeah. would be okay yes. and something yeah. to mention. Yes. Then there's even more tension because if the guy messes it up, not only does the guy maybe get killed, right. but he's, he's going to lose trouble. his job. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. So. yeah, that's good. Good. Right, and it also is like David's a professional witness. He keeps saying he knows the drill. We've yes, done this before. we've done this so before. Again, right. it just, right. just kind of was we don't know. confusing as to what who David I was. Maybe, I mean, maybe he's a, another cop who's undercover. Mm. You know, maybe he's an undercover cop, David, and he goes in and he infiltrates and but he, sounds like he a gets Google. information but and they get him out. You know what like I mean? Like Frankly, what they were doing yeah, in, the, in sounds... the room sounded like the Three Stooges. They were spilling things, they were tripping, they were knocking yeah. things over. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was more. Why did you touch that? What are you yeah. stupid? You touch yes. that? You know, yeah. they're making all kinds of yeah. stupid mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't deserve to be working in the Secret Service or whatever. Yeah. Right. Mm. All right, we do have to summarize this. Anything else? Okay. Yes, there are a couple of verbs, uh, bottom of four and top of five. We entered the stairwell, I'd find a better verb, and we, we were joined, Ed and I both noticed this, um, flight of stairs joined by cool air, the faint smell of disinfectant, joined by, I didn't know that that was such a good verb, so just be careful with, with your verb choice. Anything like that too, we, we mark it down, we edit yes. it, mm -hmm. so that you can go through all of our edits and read it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this helped out. My daughter is signaling that we are almost out of time. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this has helped. Um, Gwen, thank you for writing in. So we hope this helps. And even the example I was just talking about with a, a, a different approach that you're setting up the scene. And then, you know, we talked a lot about not having so much play-by-play, -play, but really yeah. bringing... Yeah, some, yeah, you no don't need to reach for the doorknob. Yeah. You don't need to. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a rich plot here. Just take out the other stuff. Yeah. The, you know, ancillary stuff. Yes, and then go from there. So thank you so much. And thank you everyone else for joining us for this episode of Writers Infusion. We will all see you next time. Keep writing. Keep writing.